Hi and welcome to the third in the series of West 101. The episode we'll be talking about how the bridging market has evolved over the years, uh, how some of the changes in clients and uses, and obviously some of the obstacles, and more importantly, some of the opportunities for 2022. Today I'm delighted to be joined by one of the biggest champions of short-term finance. His multi-award winning company has pioneered bridging over the last 20 years and has been a spokesperson for the specialist market during that time. I'm delighted to be joined by Joe Breeden, Managing Director of Crystal Specialist Finance. Hi Joe, thanks for joining us today, I really appreciate your time as well. It's great to be here, thanks for the fabulous intro. <laughs> no problem at all, no problem. So Joe, how has bridging finance evolved during your career at Crystal Specialist Finance? I think, you know, in simple terms, it's gone from the product used as last resort to you know, a real useful um, product suite in, in, in a property professional's armoury. Mm. You know, I think when, when, when I first got into the game in 2006, um, bridging was generally for people who were about to be repossessed or had serious adverse conditions. Rates were, you know, nearly 2% a yeah. month. So rates have come down, LTVs have gone up, mm -hmm. the professionalism has improved, I think the quality of lender um, has, has improved over the last 15 years um, mm. plus as well, and I think you know, bridging is in an unbelievable place now um, compared to where it was originally. It's sort of gone from being a little black book, you know, lending product to, to something that's really, really pro. Yeah, it certainly feels a lot more mainstream than it ever has been as well. The, the competitive element to the, the bridging market, the number of competitors, and like you say, the pricing has certainly come down significantly now with a lot of the challenger banks um, and a lot of the, uh, the private lenders really making. Uh, Making significant roads into that as well. Yeah, I, I, think, I, think, I think the thing for me as well is, you know, the the the, the user benefits from it. Mm -hmm. I think the user mm -hmm. benefits now. I think previously they were, they were forced to use the, mm -hmm. the product, and now it's something that you know they're looking up, wanting to find. Yeah, it's and certainly becoming more of a, a first time option, isn't it? Consciousness. Yeah. So, what do you think the biggest misconception about bridging is for uh, for customers or or intermediary? Yeah, again, I think I think that, it, that that it's expensive. I think people, you know, very very used, particularly with with all time low interest rates at the moment. I think um, people there's a misconception that the, the bridging um, um, costs are are silly high. I think the, the reality of it is, you know, what, what you're trying to achieve in the product. I think what you've got to look is that, you know bridging as an overall cost comparison versus the outcome of the yeah. of, of, of the product plan. I think six percent per annum. You know, funding that's available out in the marketplace isn't that expensive. It's just relative to the mainstream mortgage market. It, you know, it, it does feel like a bit of a hit. But you know, the ROI that these guys get on on on, on use license for bridging is mm. you know mega. Yeah, it's, it's it's all about how bridging can be used as part of the profit loss of a project, isn't it? You know, it's not just a, a fixed cost that you just look at that. It's a it's a cost of if we use bridging to get it from A to B, 100%. this is the this is the uh, the reward. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we we always say just put it down in simple maths terms. Don't worry about the interest rates and what the number you know what that looks like on the on, on a piece of paper. Just work out what 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 your total gain is from the project mm -hmm. piece. And, you know, we're seeing a lot of heavy refurb stuff. So if yeah. someone's buying a, a you know property for a hundred grand, they're spending ten on it, it's worth one one thirty, one forty, one fifty k. Bridges cost them four or five grand. You know, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, definitely, and especially you mentioned heavy refurb there as well. A lot of the conversions from commercial to sort of residential, the return on investment for that as well, and, and the amount of wealth that people are creating out of property now is certainly um, as as high as it's ever been as well. Really. And, and, and I think I think you know what one of the things you know, it's not a misconception. It's really more you know with people acting inappropriately with their with with their mainstream mortgages. You know, we we do still see. Um, people refurbing properties under the terms of buy to mm. mortgages with the mm. solutions, etc., or the residential mortgage. Technically, that puts been breach. So, you know, bridging is the right product. You know, it, it, yes, it is a little bit more expensive than than, than, than what the, the mainstream mm. buy to let products, you know, are at. But it's the right product. In you know, you're absolutely acting within the covenants of that loan agreement. Yeah. Just play safe. Yeah, for the right customer as well, it's a, it's a really useful tool. We're seeing more and more of that as well. Have you noticed any changes to the sort of type of bridging that uh, people are using? You know, what, what they're using the sort of bridging for and how that sort of evolved? Yeah, we've definitely seen an increase of um, you know, regulated bridging throughout the years. I think, I think actually homeowners using bridging to chain break mm -hmm. um, has been on the rise over, over recent years. I think, I think particularly in the last 18 months, um, we, you know, we're seeing a lot of heavy refurb bridging where people are you know, buying from auction or buying 
um, a totally mortgage property and, and seeing an opportunity to, to create capital growth using mm -hmm. using bridging finance products and there's some really amazing products out in the marketplace that will forward fund mm -hmm. to give refer work. So you know definitely seeing um, investor demand around you know the, the, those elements as well as you know ever increasing um, um, demand for for home owner bridging. Yeah, I mean, you, you mentioned, I mean, the types of clients as well that traditionally were people who may have been let down by their, their bank or there might have been a retention on the property because they were purchasing, etc. as well. It's now become, you know, a whole new set of customers as well, obviously property investors and also, you know, private individuals using it for raising money particularly quickly for businesses, purchasing property, purchasing, you know, it might be for business use for cash injections, cash flows, things like that as well. So. I mean, we're seeing a, a, a huge uh, demographic shift in uh, what used to be tradition, what a, a bridging customer sort of looked like as well. It, it's, it's just, as we said at the start, it's just definitely more professional in my opinion. I think, mm. I think, I think the sector is, um, um, as we continue to educate the sector, I think, I think you know, it's become more professional and that's it's just awesome for us all. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely.